Hi everybody and welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you don't know who I am, my name is Ashley. I'm a professional cosplay photographer, Twitch affiliate, and TikToker. Today I'm with an Asian-inspired overseas idol named Clover. She's going to chat with us about her idol experience and come to terms with music. And I'm really excited for you to meet her. So without further ado, here's Clover. Hello. Hello everyone. I am Clover. I am an overseas idol from Southern Indiana. I am an aspiring singer and songwriter. I've been singing my whole life and I've always had a deep love for Japanese culture. Um, the last few years, I discovered that there is actually a whole community of overseas idols, also known as Kaigai idols, um, that are basically independent musicians who are inspired by Japanese music culture. And I just debuted as a part of that community about a month ago. Okay, so the first thing I want to ask you about is how you got into this. How did you become an idol? Okay, so like I said, I've been singing for a really long time. Um, during the pandemic, I started getting interested in posting covers online because you couldn't go out and perform anymore during the pandemic. So um, I started getting interested in doing more songs from like animes and Disney and stuff like that. And it kind of didn't work out. I got a little bit discouraged. So I started doing like skits at, at masquerades yeah. at different conventions and I was performing as a singer in those. Um, again, it's always been like connected to this like Japanese culture anime interest that I have. And so, yeah, over the last few months I discovered the Kaigai Idol community. Um, I joined some discords and kind of lurked on there for a little while <laughs> to see kind of like what it was about, like what is this. And I kind of discovered that it was what I had been trying to do previously where I wanted to do music that was inspired by J-pop and anime and things like this but I wanted to do it as a person that's not from Japan. And so, yeah, now I get to write my own songs or cover songs that are from J-pop or are inspired by J-pop. And I'm really excited to be doing that. I like that you mentioned that as somebody not from Japan, because there's like a big difference in appreciation and appropriation, and I feel like you nail appreciation. Well, thank you. You make it an art. I, I try. <laughs> so the next thing that I would like to ask you about is how did you, figure out what you wanted to look like as your idol persona ah oh, okay so like the image of my idol persona yeah. so um for, we'll start with kind of the name so the name clover with the four as the e kind of comes from this ability that i have to find four leaf clovers it's a hobby of mine i collect them yeah but um i wanted that to kind of tie into the persona in that i wanted it to be very like I've always been into cottage core a lot yeah. and I wanted to mix cottage core with J fashion and kind of marry them together. So that's kind of the vibe that I go for a lot. That's awesome. I think it's really interesting for people who come from the cosplay background who change into these different acts, we'll call it an act, where you entertainment and I think with you creating this persona it dives back into your cosplay do you want to talk about that sure so um obviously like you said i have a background in cosplay i have been cosplaying since 2017 um used to do it very heavily um had like an instagram that was devoted to just that and everything um, before i started really diving back into my first love which is music um but they've been kind of crossing over a lot um back when i first started getting back into music Cosplay was kind of my gateway to finding my love for music again because I would start competing in different masquerades and things as characters and be singing as characters. So now, as this persona Clover, she's also kind of a character, but at the same time she's a lot more me than a lot of the cosplays that I do. Yeah. So now that we're into cosplay, I want to bring up the fact that you have done music in your cosplay. Mm -hmm. And you won a competition as Elsa at a con. Do you? Why don't you tell them about it? Okay. So um, I've actually won a few awards for doing um, masquerade skits. Um, for those who don't know, um, when you do cosplay competitions, there's usually two different categories that you can do. You can do craftsmanship, which is where you've you know you're you've made your cosplay and you're kind of getting judged based on your um, sewing ability and things like that. Or you can do um, skits. We're close to a road. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
Um, but you can also do skits, um, which are just supposed to tell a story about the character that you're portraying. And one of the kinds of skits you can do is a musical skit. Um, when I discovered this, it like blew my mind because I was like, oh my gosh, it's like musical theater, except for I'm the director, like yeah. I'm in control of it. So um, yeah, on a whim kind of, after seeing the Frozen 2 movie, I decided I'm gonna try doing this. Um, and I made my costume by hand because the movie was so new that they didn't even have official costumes out yet. There wasn't an official karaoke track out yet. I had to go find it from another YouTuber who had made one. Um, it was like a whole ordeal. I like signed up at the last minute at the con, passed the audition and got to perform. But I wound up winning Best in Show That's awesome. for like the entire competition, which was just mind blowing for me. But it was also really significant because it kind of reminded me that, oh yeah, I do have something special about my voice and people do want to hear it. And it really just, I would say that that really like launched me back into my love for music. So yeah, in a way, cosplay really opened that door back up for me. guy aspect of this and why we're here do you want to give us some enlightenment on it if, for the people who don't know exactly everything about it sure so I think there's a lot of misconception about what a Kai Guy Idol is or maybe some people have never even heard of it before like I hadn't heard of it until earlier this year um, so a Kai Guy Idol is an overseas idol overseas idols are basically just independent musicians uh, or cover artists that are inspired by the j-pop music scene um or that concept so i don't know how familiar you are with like j-pop idols yeah but of course there are ones that are like famous and signed with big companies and then there are the lesser known underground idols also known as chica idols yeah that are they become more well known by performing live rather than just like yeah. being signed with a big company but um the thing that's different about like j-pop idols versus k-pop idols for example is k-pop idols go through years and years of training in these like very specialized like courses to become k-pop idols very few of them actually get to debut and are like chosen um but when it comes to j-pop idols many of them start with like little to no experience so part of the fun of it is getting to watch them grow and develop over time so that's why it feels, I think, a lot more accessible for many people because it's like you can start anywhere and still be a J-pop idol. And, uh, you know, that even resonates with people overseas. So that's a awesome. lot of people have, like, taken an interest in that concept and then, of course, like, the aesthetic and the sound. There's a very distinct sound to J-pop music and they're inspired by those things and they want to bring those experiences to the United States and to audiences here because yeah. they have an appreciation for it. Yeah. Um, and yeah, so that's basically what Kai Guy and Overseas Idols are here. If you have more questions about that or you wanna learn more about it, um, I would her. recommend either, yeah, you can follow me because I put out information about it or um, you can check out other Kai Guy Idols. Um, there's one on YouTube whose name is Alex Pinku. Um, she's got several videos out that give more information about what a Kai Guy Idol is. And so you can check those out too. Yeah, and also I wanted to touch on it. Like, everybody really knows K-pop right now because it's become almost like an American phenomenon uh -huh. now. It's, and we can accredit that really to Blackpink and BTS, I think, and now Stray Kids. But when you think of, like, these idols in other Asian countries, you really don't think of anything other than K-pop. So I think it's really interesting that people like Clover have brought the Japanese aspect here, especially from somebody who, as myself, comes from heritage that has that background we don't we don't see that here very much so it's really nice to see people appreciate it and not appropriate it too 
So the last thing we're going to talk about today is the fact that you are not just a one trick pony. You do a lot of different things besides cosplay and your idol work. Um, I know that you recently with your K-pop cover group did a big showcase at a con recently. Do you want to talk about everything? Sure. So, um, I, I'm one of those people that has too many hobbies. Um, I'm never one to have like only one iron in the fire. Um, sometimes I get burnt because of that, but it keeps my life interesting. I just like to do all the things. So, um, the J-pop thing is fairly new, even though I've been recording covers that are like this, um, for quite some time. Um, but I also do work obviously as a cosplayer and as, um, a K-pop cover artist with my group Zodiac. Um, we also are involved in a lot of local events and things that happen up in Columbus, Ohio. So yes, I'm in like three different states. Um, <laughs> cause I'm from Indiana. I work in Kentucky and of course I'm in Kentucky today. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, I do a lot of stuff in Ohio as well. So I'm all over the place, but, um, yeah, so we are involved in several events up there. Matsuri Con is one of the events that we're heavily involved in. Uh, this year we ran our dance showcase. It's a K-pop, J-pop dance showcase and competition uh, that we run. This was its second year and we went from having 12 applicants last year to 47 this year. Oh so it's definitely growing and we were really excited to see that. Um, we're excited to see what happens with it next year as well. It's something that takes like six months for us to prepare for. It's, it's a huge event for us every year. So um, yeah, it's really exciting. But we yeah. also run panels at the convention about to K educate other people and also just let K-poppers have fun together. That's fun. I remember because I did a photo shoot. If some of you follow my photography page back in, I think it was May. Was it May? We, like I that. worked with Zodiac with some photos and they were like, heavy. they were like, we have to get back. We have to start prepping for this and that. They were like, thanks for the photos. Like we had a great time, but they were like, like telling me all about the, how knee deep they were in planning this stuff. And uh, this con wasn't even until August. So yeah, yeah, it's, it's a lot. And we, the thing is, because I live in a different state, when we do get together, we literally have like three days to cram in like all of our work for that month so it's yeah. just like so hard <laughs> yeah they work really hard i haven't seen her and her group i haven't seen any other people who do stuff like that work as hard as they do and especially this one she works all the time day and night i see it <laughs> We're gonna 
or I hope she doesn't fall in the water, guys. But um, we are uh, filming, just so you all know, we are at Yuko Inn on the Elkhorn in Georgetown, Kentucky. It is a Japanese botanical garden. Um, very beautiful. There's a bridge down there, but somebody's having a wedding. And while we were doing our YouTube video, we crashed it. Um, they are literally in the background of our whole video getting married. So um, if you happen, well, oh, they were setting up. Yeah, well, yeah. good. Well, their setup has us in the background um, and they are in our background. So those people you see standing behind us are not with us. They are a wedding that we crashed. So yeah, but Happy yes, day, though. yeah, congratulations married people so just stand like you are hands behind your back i might try to get that bridge in the background and then you okay and then we can do some headshots oh that turned out really pretty i'm going to show the camera look at that so we're going to wrap this video up i'm going to let clover tell you about her current projects that she's working on yeah so um as clover i have several things that i'm working on right now i am already gearing up for performances next year um, because it takes some time to prepare for those. Um, but also there's just not many events in this area happening in the fall and winter. So that's yeah. fine with me. I have plenty of time to prepare. In the meantime, um, I am going to be putting out some covers really soon. I have one I'm going to be recording tomorrow. Um, and then I have one planned for uh, Christmas. I have one planned in between those two. That's and awesome. I have some mini dance covers that I'm also going to be putting out. There's one I'm going to do for Halloween. So that'll Ooh. be super fun. Um, and yeah, I am also trying to start putting out vlogs as well and different things like that. So definitely trying to get some different content aside from just music stuff. Uh, I'm trying to think what else do I have going on? I think that's about it. Oh, I'm doing some original songs. I almost forgot to mention oh. that. So this will be the first time that I'm releasing original songs, but I've learned a lot from the other independent idols in the community and I'm really excited to take a shot at it because I've been writing songs for like two or three years now but I haven't put them out anywhere and so this seems like a perfect opportunity for me to do that. That's exciting. I can't wait to hear them. Well that's the end of this video. I want to thank Clover for coming on and chatting with us today. Um, if you're just tuning in and didn't figure out who I was from the beginning, I'm Ashley. I'm a professional cosplay photographer and Twitch affiliate and TikToker. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, like and subscribe, hit the bell notifications. If you didn't and you give it a thumbs down, thank you for the algorithm boost. And again, we'll see you in the next video. Bye.